Hey hey, today we're checking out Chernobyl again, specifically on the MetaQuest. The code for this game was kindly provided to me through Meta, but you guys know the drill. All the opinions on the game are indeed my own. Okay, let's get into it. Chernobyl again seemed to come out of nowhere, from a rather small team that are passionate about making a game authentic to the disaster of Chernobyl. Now that all does seem a bit dry, doesn't it? So the writers made this story have a cool sci-fi twist about this kind of Doctor Who type time travelling scientist who has to go back and try to stop the whole Chernobyl disaster by herself. The story has more turns as you go and doesn't take long till you get a really nice twist. The story is definitely one of the stronger aspects of the game. There's also some really good voice acting here that I would put up there with some of the best I've heard on the system for this type of thing. This must be it. I'm ready, Roman. I assembled the device and found the code. Enter the code and set the timer to 15 minutes. The Bureau estimates that the time corruptor should arrive at the safe house in that time frame. Done and done. A welcome surprise after just having played Zero Calibre 2 with its awfully cheesy dialogue. First things first, let's talk about these visuals. The team are going for photorealistic graphics to really try and capture the eerie atmosphere of Chernobyl. They visited the Chernobyl exclusion zone various times, documenting accurate snaps of how the actual place looks to implement into the game. My first impressions going in were a bit mixed. The first part of the game is set in a ship in space and sets up the sci-fi nature of the story. Then on the first level you're in the famous control centre. This is a bit better with a nice little jump scare with the falling light that you see in the trailer. But ultimately I was left feeling a bit underwhelmed. The locations look great. You can tell the work the team put in to not only make this game look as accurate to the real life thing but also get it looking this good on standalone hardware has really paid off. The issue is a lack of real atmosphere. There aren't anything to bring those rooms to life, with the falling light as I mentioned being really the only thing to make you feel anything. Something like NPCs walking around in this early level may have potentially helped. So once you get past level 1, level 2 is 150% better. They should have started the game here. The level is oozing with creepy atmosphere as you try and traverse the flooded walkways of the station, with nothing but your headlamp and gas mask that obscures your vision. There's fire effects ripping through the level and a constant threat of your radiation levels getting too high if you stick around irradiated areas. It's a shame that the game starts quite weak as this level shows much more potential. So what is the game? What are you doing? The game is a puzzle sort of escape room style game. Escape room is maybe not 100% accurate, let me explain. So each level you'll be transported into an area around Chernobyl. I've mentioned the control room and the eerie tunnels. Each area has many puzzles to solve within to progress. There might be a little backtracking to pick up some items you've previously seen that's usefulness has now become apparent. The puzzles have been quite strong and some have been rather tricky up to where I've played. Some however are a bit frustrating like trying to find a random component in the level. I'll give you two quick examples early on. On the second level you have to replace a broken pipe with one that isn't broken. The good pipe is inside a cabinet hidden around a corner in a previously explored room where you have to hook a key out from a fire. There we go, I just saved you 20 minutes of pointlessly checking every inch of the level to find that stupid pipe. The third level has you aimlessly walking around until a voiceover of the character says, maybe we could move one of those cars, to which you'll go, huh, and try and move a bumper car to see a box you need under it. It's so so obscure. I never would have worked it out as an informed decision, I had to be told, and by that point why not just put the box on top of the bumper car. So there are some duds in the puzzle design but mostly it's pretty solid. I want to talk about a couple more areas of gameplay that are okay but they're a little janky. Two areas of note. Using tools like the crowbar or the wrench feel kind of bad. You can sort of see from the footage but they're not easy or enjoyable to use. In a game where you'll be using lots of tools, it would be better if these were instead a joy to use. Second is the watch menu system that doubles down as an inventory. This watch isn't great. I'm constantly hitting buttons I don't want to and I have to hold everything I want to store in my right hand as the watch is on my left hand. Just a bit fiddly. The game would be so much more fun to play if these areas were a little bit more seamless. Anyway, that's my first impressions of Chernobyl again. It's a bit of a mixed bag, but I do think the game has potential if it's priced appropriately. Check it out if you're into these escape room style puzzle games. It might be up your street. Thanks for watching Goosey Goggles VR. My name's Dan. See ya.
Hey hey, thanks for tuning in! Today we're checking out Fract for the MetaQuest 2 and 3. This original PSVR title came out back in 2021, but Endreams treat us to a new port on our favourite standalone system. Now I'm going to play this review as if the original never existed, and we'll purely judge this one on its own merits. Let's get into it. Drill 